hi everyone this is day two of our London vlog series and today we unfortunately had a really early start um, because we were awoken by a fire alarm in the building yeah so we were going to get up shortly after it anyway yeah. but we had this like startled awakening um, because the fire alarm started to go off at about quarter to eight. Um, Will quickly dashed downstairs. Uh, I was quickly getting dressed because we're obviously staying here and mum is in the room next door. So I kind of was conscious that um, if there was a fire, I was then going to have to help her. And um, so Will went down to see if there, what the crack was. And uh, lo and behold, we were very lucky that it was just a false alarm, that there was actually a fault yeah. and that there was a, a technician coming out to then fix it. But it did mean then for about 45 minutes that every couple of minutes, you know, the alarm started to go off again. Mm -hmm. So it meant that if you did want to come back to bed, it was not going to happen. Um, so we just got up. Because we were sort of dressed anyway, we just sort of thought, stuff up, let's go and quickly and grab something for breakfast. Um, and then we can then come back up and get ready to go out for the day. Yeah, so the breakfast at the Premier Inn is served down in the basement um, at the minus one level. And it has your usual Premier Inn uh, breakfast items, including your Continental, your fruits, and then a hot food selection as well. Yeah, so it's all served buffet style, but we have to say that even the hot food stuff, um, it was hot. Um, and they're, they're sort of constantly replenishing it yeah. as well, uh, which is good. So you're getting the food pretty fresh as well. And even for the amount of people, it didn't seem to get too busy. Yeah. Um, everybody was able to get their items and, and go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so breakfast was really good. Um, we then obviously came up to our room and got showered, changed and ready to then head out to explore. So today um, we had organised a private um, London cabbie tour, basically of um, the highlights basically of what London has to offer. Um, it's my mum's first time in London um, and because obviously she has um, issues with walking long distances, um, we thought that this sort of cab option of a tour would be really good for her. Um, so I basically just found uh, Graham, who is, his company is called London Cab Tours. Found him just by Googling and then checked out his uh, social media and things like that and got in touch. And basically um, he has um, three, five and seven hour tours of London. Um, but they can all be very much sort of tailored to what you want to sort of see and do as well. So we actually picked a five hour tour. Yeah, so Graham was really good. He met us just at the side of our hotel. And just to start, he um, explained how he was going to make the, the tour flexible to us, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit about where he was going to stop and um, that he would obviously, um, if we needed to go to the toilet or get refreshments, that he would build that in around it and pretty much uh, allow us to control the tour really yeah so um obviously we take in the main sort of sites like westminster and royal london houses of parliament big ben and um, then we went to visit uh, st paul's cathedral shakespeare's globe um yeah. all the royal palaces so like yeah. st james's palace tower of london tower yes. bridge and um, so all the sort of big things that you would expect to see whenever you come to London and uh, and then we had a short break in the middle uh, for lunch uh, for about half an hour um, but um, really it was quite jam-packed um, and we're going to basically then share with you five of the things that we learned today from Graham uh, who was extremely knowledgeable and um, he's been doing these tours for about 20 years I yes, think he said right, yeah. um, and that really much shows because there's not really an awful lot that he doesn't seem to know um, and you had fired a couple of questions at him mum had a couple of questions as well and he always seemed to sort of build out oh yeah he did yeah so here are the top five things that we learned and we're quite amused by this is the royal warrant it is granted as a mark of recognition to the shop or to a person that supplies goods or services to the royal household. Those issued by the late Queen and Duke of Edinburgh become void after two years of their passing. Westminster is the political and cultural heart of the city and includes landmarks such as Buckingham Palace and the West End Theatre District. The City of London, a ceremonial borough, is the historic and financial heart, being bounded by Roman walls built more than 2,000 years ago. 
For those fans of the film Mary Poppins, you'll remember the lighting of the gas lamps. There are still around 1,500 lamps still in London, which are lit at night. This is the work of five engineers from British Gas. Some of these lamps date back to the reign of King George IV from 1820 to 1830. Tower Bridge may look like an old stone bridge, but it is in fact a steel structure completed in 1893 where the steel is protected by Cornish granite and Portland stone cladding. What do you think this is? This is actually a boot scraper and it was used by the men after being out on their horses and hunting all day to clean their boots before going indoors. So between the three of us, um, for the five hour tour, we spent £300. Now that could have accommodated up to six people. Um, obviously we only had three. Um, but I really did feel that it was worth that money. Graham himself was a very personable and knowledgeable man, always giving out different facts about where we were. And most of them were really interesting ones that we had never heard before yeah. and that we never would have heard on like the likes of a hop on hop off. He was also really knowledgeable with uh, the streets of London and the places that he took us. He got so close, like he, he was able to get his taxi into different spaces and it really meant that for Johnny's mum, she was only walking very short distances. I think it was like 20 steps out from where the space was to like that Shakespeare uh, yeah. place where you just wouldn't have got anywhere near that with any other um, form of transport. I think because, you know, he sort of got to know us as the morning went on yeah. and sort of could see that, you know, where Mama B sort of struggled. So there was a bit of walking whenever we visited Buckingham Palace. Yes, that was... Uh, St. James's Palace. So that was the, the largest part of the walking uh, that we had to do. So we could see that sort of after that, Mum was a bit tired and mm-hmm. sore. So it meant then that he knew that, we, you know, where we were going to go. He also sort of had said that, you know, what we had planned, what he initially normally plans on our tour is that for lunch... They would visit Borough Market, but again, because we took the tour on Saturday and Borough Market, it was extremely was busy. busy yeah. He already sort of got the impression from Mum that she wouldn't really be that keen on crowds, based on his experience of what Mum had been like, even whenever we were at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And I think it was really superb that sort of Graham was able to read, you know, us that way and Mum that way and offer her, and um, that you know the the options then. The options, yeah. You know, I think offering having those options. For us as a group was just it made it that extra level above anything yeah. else and like you know whenever you sort of say about 300 pounds it seems like a lot of money like it's probably 40 pounds like for a day ticket on a hop on hop off bus which isn't as comfortable and um, mm. for a start you know you get the really cheap crappy headphones that you're sort of trying to struggle to listen to mm-hmm. you get the hair blown off you and you know on the open top um and it wouldn't have been as enjoyable you know mm-hmm. and i think if there was six people and it was only going to be 50 pounds a head then you know i think it's a no-brainer really i know? think for the likes of your mom like i, I seen your mom like chatting to him in front of you know bucking well we were all chatting to him do you know it, it's just a much more of an intimate view of something and mm-hmm. if you feel like you just want to ask something he's going to have that answer there for you so you mm-hmm. really get that satisfaction of Oh, I've, I've wondered this, I've wondered that, and yeah. he gives you that answer. So it, it's a really personable and just, yeah, really good. We would definitely recommend um, using um, his service. Yeah. Um, and we'll stick a, a link uh, to his website in the description below. Um, because he does like different tours as well. Um, you know, he talked about doing different short tours and things. And um, so, and he was able to say to us, even if we did come back to London, about certain places to go, certain places mm. to try out. Um, so, yeah, we would definitely, if we wanted to book any other tours, tour, yeah. we would definitely be giving Graham a mm-hmm. shout. So at the end of the tour, uh, Graham dropped us right back at our hotel and we just chilled for a bit, having been with him for five hours. So we just took a little bit of chill out time before um, heading out for dinner. So tonight we just uh, decided that we would go down to the hotel restaurant, which is located in the basement, minus one, um, to have our dinner. And um, because we had already paid for breakfast, um, they said that they would basically charge us £15 each and for that we could have a drink and two courses. Um, however... That was part of the meal deal, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, however, we didn't really get that far in that um, after our starters... 
Um, we noticed that there was a little guest in the restaurant um, in the form of a rodent, a little mouse. Not sure whether his name is Stuart Little or not. I think it was. You think it was. Um, Yeah, so I saw something out of the corner of my eye and I thought, my goodness, did that... Was that a mouse that scurried along the carpet? And then I said to one of the waitresses, she really looked horrified and scared. And then... um, But then we could sort of see it poking its head out from this little booth. And I was like, oh my goodness, we're not staying here. And mum was sort of getting really anxious and things too. Then it like scurried across the floor to the table behind us. And then you thought you had saw it like running underneath our table. And then we all sort of got up and moved. And I said to the waitress, look, we don't want to stay here. No. And I was like, can we have our meal to take out? Like I was on top of the bench <laughs> on my feet, like ready to leave. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah so we were just like no we're not staying here to eat and um you then had went upstairs with the food whenever it was ready well actually before this do you remember we were all looking looking for the mouse yeah and then i actually caught it on video so i'll insert a little clip here of the little bugger yeah. <laughs> um and then and um, whenever then they, they went to charges wrong and i asked them to correct the bill and uh, and then this mouse was sort of still lurking about the place and that and i was just like oh I just sort of had like the shivers and I uh, says like, I says, I really don't, don't think we should be paying for this meal, you know, I says, because like, we can't even enjoy it here, yeah. you know, because there's like rodent running about the place. Um, so she then went and got her manager who came over and she wasn't really, she was quite hard faced and sort of was like, you're not paying, you know, and I was like, well, do you think we should? And she's like, well, you still got the food. And I was like, yeah, but we're not eating it in the restaurant, yeah. you know, because you've got like a mouse running about. Um, then to top it all off, this other family came in and, and the, the guy was like, oh, he looks like a friendly little chap. And I'm like, well, sure, why don't go and lift him then? And then we can all enjoy our dinner. Yeah. Um, but needless to say, that family didn't stick around. So maybe they didn't like Stuart at all. Yeah, so they um, didn't stay and eat in a restaurant. No. no. So anyway, um, I sort of said, well, look, I think the least you could do is offer us a bit of a reduction. And she offered us 20%. Still not overly probably happy with that, but I just want it out of the place. And, um, you know, she was just like, oh, well, I phone pest control, so what else can I do? Well, okay, but it's not my problem. You've got a mouse running yeah. in your restaurant, you know. But anyway, uh, we came upstairs to a room and we actually sat in mum's room and ate. Yeah. And um, I think, well, we probably didn't even eat all our I mean, it was okay, though. The, the, the food was nice enough. Yeah, I thought it was good, yeah. And um, I had the gambling and chips. And you had a pizza? I had a pizza, yeah. And mum wasn't really that hungry, so she just had, like, onion rings and chips. But I think she didn't need very much of those either. I think she was just sort of, like, sitting in a room, sort of, like, thinking, oh, there's something in my room now, you know. But, um, so, yeah, it wasn't a great experience. So the show we were going to see tonight was Mrs. Doubtfire. And this was at the Shaftesbury Theatre. I really, really enjoyed the show. I, it sort of stuck to the, the, the movie in terms of the the general storyline but it it added in so much additional comedy uh value impression stuff that mm-hmm. you're the guy um he was a really good impressionist and i really particularly loved all the singing po- ensembles there was a, like it seemed to always have large groups of um singing and it, it was really just funny as well i don't know it was just really good yeah it was just like, um, it was good, like, how they were able to stick to the, like, to the storyline in the movie quite a lot. There was a few little changes, mm-hmm. um, but it was really, a, it was such a good show because yeah. there was, there was a lot of sentiment in it and emotion in it at certain points and there was a lot of comedy. Um, it was a real great show. I was really impressed, um, by it. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing to sort of say is we sat on the, the Royal Circle and this theatre um, in terms of accessibility, I actually had phoned up um, because I couldn't find an awful lot on their website about it. So I phoned up um, the theatre beforehand and the lovely lady uh, helped me book the tickets over the telephone and she was able to explain that the whenever you enter from street level, the Royal Circle is actually at street level. Um, so it turns out then that basically we mum only had like three or four steps to climb and uh, to get to the, the third row that we were sitting on and mm-hmm. um, so it was really good and um, thank you to that lady on the phone uh, that helped us uh, to book those tickets ahead of shit uh, ahead of us coming here um, but, and but and mum really enjoyed it as well so after the show it was um, quick taxi back over the river and back to our room to relax and call it a night 
If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a like down below. And if you like our content and want to see more, uh, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out when we next post a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.